Oh, that's one good looking game. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. Oh, we need to check that out. I like. Oh. 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 Okay. Hey guys, my name is Perico, and welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, yeah, sorry for that sarcastic intro, but um, with Studio Hop games, I'm always very on edge when playing their games. Anyway, um. Today I want to review and look at Planet Capture. Now I have already played a decent bunch. Uh, I started, well, officially started yesterday. Uh, I played it before already, but I wasn't exactly convinced by it. But I decided to give it a go anyway. And I want to uh, point out a few things. More specifically, I want to point out what makes it better and slash worse than Astro Conquest, which is also a video, uh, also a game I made a video about. And, well, I got a lot of feedback when I posted that video, because I also shared the video across a couple of Discord servers, which I was on, and, yeah. I was criticized that uh, some of the points I made didn't exactly make sense, so I want to elaborate a bit more in depth in this game, however. So, I want to give a few reasons why and why not something is useful or not. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So, the first thing I can already show, maybe not show you, but tell you, is that we now have a passive resource generation. I will have to cancel that soon because I'm already over my military limit. Uh, so you can see, okay, for, it goes down still, but you know, it goes automatically up. So we now have a passive resource generation, which is what I criticized in my previous video, which I find really great because that is actually offering us as a player to farm resources overnight as example which actually encourages the capturing of more planets because you don't have to click separately for a one minute long production and have to keep going like that over and over and over again unless of course you spend titanium okay just gonna cancel that because i don't want to exhaust my military limit so what makes this concept generally good but also rather bad so you can see i don't generate any more resources now Okay, now I still do, but that should subside relatively soon. So anyway, there's a really close call and there's a really close limit to how many resources you can have. Which means that after a certain point, you cannot generate more resources, which leaves you with the option of either having to spend it or having to, um, you know, expand your storage by getting yourself more upgrades. However, in order to get more upgrades, you have to get more economy limit. In order to get more economy limit, you have to get yourself a economy ministry, which costs, of course, titanium. Now, why do I dislike that? The thing is, this is a very, very low number. Compared to how active you're supposed to play this game in order to achieve something, this is a really low number. So I've been, as I said, uh, as I said, playing since yesterday, and you can see I don't exactly have much. I have those green bases, those are mine, those are five bases, and most of them aren't even really far leveled, and I cannot further upgrade them. You know, they have mostly level four or level three production. Um, they you know, lack defense, like I have nine here, I would like to have, uh, well, I'd like them to have much, much more than that. Um, and I find it really sad that the defense itself is counted towards the economy. Because without the defense being accounted into economy, we would at least be able to, um, let, let's be, let me see, how much would, okay, that's not counting towards the current limit. So I'm just construct uh, aboard the construction. But yeah, the problem is, if as long as the um, defense is being counted towards the economy, the economy limit is way too low. Same for the military limit. So I have a total of five ships on the Sino class, one sweep, um, sweep Harsec class, and a couple of those, um, what are they called again? Let's see, Mikopran class. No, now for the thing is... <clears throat> this is way too few. You as a developer are expecting the player, basically, to take their current um, economy military limit that they have available, 
to basically probably first max out their home base for a bit, then craft yourself a couple of the Palador ships, which give you one titanium for every 10 you build, which price of fuel, of course, is going to go higher the more you build, and the building time is also going higher. So basically, you're just going to spend a lot of time and a lot of fuel on building those, and in order to build them more efficiently, you need more fuel station, which you can already imagine requires you to have more bases. So basically, you once you start from scratch and you don't plan on spending money, you are sitting here for a very, very long time building this particular ship. Now, why I disagree with this model of um, monetization, it doesn't really encourage people to spend money because the game isn't really giving it... Um, giving a good expression from itself, if that makes sense. And because of that, I personally think what we should at least do, and if the developer is seeing this, the base limit is already good. 10 bases is restricting you enough to not already work yourself ahead and capture pretty much any base that you can get your hands on. The economy limit should either be risen to 2500, or the guns should not be accounted towards the economy limit, and should much rather be accounted maybe to an own limit, like, you know, 10 for each base, and after that you have to maybe upgrade a certain station for... You get the point. The military is way too low. Either that, or the ship costs too much. So you can see, I'm gonna just look over the ships. And we have some ships here that have 1,950 military. That is a lot. You know... We have 2,900 military here. Maybe we have some more somewhere else. Okay, okay, this one is basically the strongest bomber ship. And it almost costs your 3,000 military. That is... That is insane. The thing is, you have to see this game from two perspectives. The first perspective is the one who's spending money. And the one who's spending money should not be benefited as such, so, you know, they basically can buy and get everything. And basically skip the entire progression in the click of a button, because we still have, of course, the immediate resource button, which I would assume is going to get tripled again when you spend money once. And that is, in my opinion, a big problem. So even if I were to buy myself the immediate resources, I could not utilize them because I lack the economy. Which means I have to spend my couple of next titanium that I get for either the economy ministry or the military central or, you know, both later on because I will have to get both anyway. The base command is not exactly important right now because I'm not planning on getting more bases due to the fact that, you know, I cannot get more bases anyway and uh, protect them efficiently. Uh, so basically, the same problem like the other game, it is way too focused on money. You know, people are going to tell me again, well, you can build the ships and, you know, it's possible to get yourself a decent titanium storage relatively soon. The problem, however, is soon translates to maybe a month or maybe two or three months, so I can actually get a little bit more progress compared to before. You know, we also have to account that we in this game probably also have to go ahead again and um, get ourselves the orbital gun armor upgrade, which is going to cost something again. We're going to have to get ourselves those three again, you know, the detection phalanx, the jammer, the sensors, that we're also going to have to max out military centrals on each base. And this adds up to such an insane titanium price. No one in this world can tell me they are doing this all by themselves without spending a single cent by just building those um, titanium generating ships. However, after all this criticism, I do have to give this game one shout out. It has introduced a lot of quality of life fixes which made themselves uh, look this game or make this game look a lot better. You know, the passive resource generation is really good. I just wish I could actually translate this and utilize more of that by, you know, having a higher storage limit. As I said, maybe it would be already rather useful to go ahead and just um, raise the resource limit by a base, like, you know, maybe 2 million here, 1 million, 1 million, and for each base that you get, you can raise up by like 500,000 for each, which would pretty much already suffice, so you could, you know, build maybe one or two good ships. Anyway, the fuel consumption is also relatively low, it also, um, you know, generates by itself, so you don't run out of fuel that fast anymore. But still, you know, please think about raising the economy military limit from base and scratch on, or at least give us the opportunity to 
build the first five upgrades of those for, you know, Mulvernet and Metal, or just remove the Orbital Guns from the um, economy calculation entirely, because that really just um, ruins the game for a free player. And yes, Studio Hub, I know you don't like free players, neither do I if I would like to play, uh, wait, would like to make a game, but free players are what makes the free-to-play marketing especially useful and popular across. So anyway, this is it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I could, uh, you could agree to some of those things. And yeah, I will see you guys again in the next video. And yeah, peace.